Hi, I'm Daniel Aaron Dilger, looking at the potential for Flash on Apple's new iPad. Apple's stance on Flash for its iPhone OS platform, which includes the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and the upcoming iPad, has been that it doesn't need to have Flash at all. Recall that Jobs originally talked about Flash for the iPhone, saying that Adobe only delivered two different versions, one of which was for desktops and, and wasn't optimized for the mobile environment, and the second of all, Flash Lite, which was designed for mobiles but didn't do enough to make it worth putting on the iPhone. More recently, Jobs has changed his tune to the point where he's basically dismissed Flash as being completely irrelevant. Obviously, Adobe doesn't have the same viewpoint on the use of their own technology. And the company's been making three basic claims in support of Flash. The first is, is that it will be rolling out Flash for a variety of mobile platforms, including Windows Mobile, Android, Palm's WebOS, Symbian, pretty much everything except the iPhone and uh, RIM's BlackBerry. That suggests that it's going to be a problem for the iPad not to have Flash because everyone else will have it. Adobe is also suggesting that Apple is kind of being unfair and not allowing it to uh, put its platform on its iPhone OS and restricting competition in the marketplace, basically taking a choice away from consumers. Thirdly, Adobe is suggesting that Flash is an integral part of the web and that to experience the web, you have to have Flash While Flash is pretty important on the PC desktop, in the mobile realm it's a little bit different. While there are devices that do play Flash, mobile devices, there are not very many that play the full version of Flash that is the same as the desktop version. Most mobile devices currently use Flash Lite, and recall that this was Adobe's strategy for mobile devices prior to the iPhone. Flash Lite is a subset of Flash that uses a previous version of the scripting language in Flash, ActionScript 2.0. It's a totally different bytecode and uses a totally different uh, virtual machine to render that kind of content than the more modern version of Flash, which is Flash 9.10. ActionScript 3.0 requires a different renderer. So the desktop version of Flash, the plugin for Flash that people use on Windows and Mac OS X, it supports both engines for rendering Flash content. Flash Lite only supports the older content, which is kind of from the area of 2004. So mobile devices that support Flash Lite, while in name supporting Flash, don't actually support Flash content. That was the status quo before the iPhone. When the iPhone came, it delivered a very rich web environment without any support for Flash. So Apple really created a new expectation for the web that just didn't have Flash as part of it. Over the last three years, it does not look like the lack of Flash has had any impact on Apple's success with the iPhone and the iPod Touch. So that suggests that it's not really going to be a problem for the iPad either. The second idea that Adobe has been promoting in regards to Flash and Apple is that Apple is being somewhat unfair in restricting customers' choice by not allowing a Flash runtime on the iPhone OS devices. This is kind of ironic given the history of Flash, which is detailed in the article. But essentially, Apple invented multimedia on the desktop with QuickTime. That was in 1990. That was before Microsoft's PCs were even able to play audio reliably. Another five years later is when Flash really started to become a product. Microsoft leveraged that as, in part as a way to prevent QuickTime from gaining any traction on the web. In addition to blocking the QuickTime plugin, within Internet Explorer, Microsoft also worked to bundle Flash with Internet Explorer and exploit its monopoly position with Windows that it used to distribute Internet Explorer to also distribute Flash. And that's the primary reason why Flash became so broadly installed. As a result, Flash really killed the potential for QuickTime and for open development on the web. So really, since 2000, Apple has just been turning that back around, making QuickTime an increasingly important element of the open web. Apple and other companies su submitted QuickTime's container model as the basis for the open specification related to MPEG-4 for video. So really, rather than being an attack on choice in the marketplace in not supporting Flash on the iPhone OS, Apple is really promoting the development of open standards and the use of open standards, both open standards in the web with HTML5 and open standards in terms of video distribution using MPEG-4. Adobe is suggesting that HTML5 is a good thing, but that it's not going to happen for another decade. Well, it's already happening, 
And the reason Adobe is talking about it as being this future thing is because they want to establish that Flash still has some window of opportunity to exist in a role that HTML5 is not yet filling. But that's really not the case, particularly not the case in mobile development. This makes it very difficult to support Adobe's assertion that not supporting Flash on Apple's part is restricting consumer choice. In reality, using Flash as opposed to open standards and open specifications is really working against choice in the marketplace. And companies like Apple and Google that are supporting open standards and open specifications for media distribution on the web are really supporting choice in a, in a way that Flash isn't. Adobe's third major assertion is that Flash is a necessary part of the web, and to be able to experience the web in its full glory, you need to have Flash. That's undermined by the success of the iPhone over the last three years. Additionally, while Adobe does have a strong position in the desktop with Flash and Flash development, and broadly licensed Flash to a number of different devices, the reality is that Adobe's mobile platform, Flash Lite, is severely restrictive in terms of what it can do. It does not offer the full environment that users are expecting on the desktop. Additionally, content designed to work on the desktop using the Flash runtime is not optimized for mobile devices for a number of reasons. First of all, it basically assumes that you have a lot of processing power. Second of all, the interface is designed for Flash and Flash content that exists today is not optimized or really even designed around multi-touch interfaces. It all assumes a, the presence of a mouse pointer. It's also targeted towards large resolution displays. So cramming that down into a, a small display just doesn't work. The uses for Flash that Adobe is promoting, including video distribution, are drying up as well. The whole world is moving to H.264 codecs using a MPEG-4 container. Even Flash is moving. Increasingly, it's becoming less important to use Flash, either as a container or a codec or as a distribution mechanism. And Google is proving that with uh, migrating YouTube. The second use Adobe is promoting at Flash for is in creating rich internet applications. But here again, we have plenty of examples of rich internet applications that don't require any sort of proprietary runtime like Flash or the related Flex and Air initiatives. Apple's own mobile Me apps all use standard JavaScript in HTML to present a rich application environment on the web without needing any sort of Flash. Google's apps offer similar examples. By not putting Flash on the phone, Apple is creating a significant installed base that advertisers and content producers want to be able to reach that simply cannot be reached with proprietary binary distributions like Flash or Microsoft Silverlight. This also focuses development either on the web and using open standards for the web that can run anywhere, or in creating applications designed specifically for the iPhone and iPad using Cocoa Touch and selling those applications through the iPhone App Store. Other mobile platform developers seem to be wanting to embrace everything. Both Windows Mobile and Google and Symbian are embracing the idea of, yeah, yeah, we do support Flash, we also support native development, and we may also support something else, like Java ME. But the more different types of platforms that they have to support, the less native development they're going to be able to get for their platform, and the less emphasis they're putting on open standards like HTML5 and rendering a, a great environment for apps that can run anywhere. Apple seems to be unique in recognizing this, and this appears to be a reason why Apple will be able to maintain its lead in the App Store. This all provides very few reasons to expect Flash to ever appear on the iPad or other iPhone OS devices from Apple.